There are various types of flexible couplings encountered nowadays in the industry. In this video, we will first list them, then in the next couple of videos, we will see each one of them in details. The first types of couplings is the gear couplings, as depicted here. These couplings could have a continuous lubrication or can be grease-packed. The second type is flexible membrane or flexible disc couplings. These couplings could be either single membrane type or could be multiple membrane or multiple disc type. And finally, the last type of couplings is the elastomer couplings. These are couplings with elastomer insert flexible drive members. The following figure depicts a typical example of a gear type coupling. Gear couplings usually include two separate gear mesh units as highlighted here. Each gear mesh unit consists of an external gear which fits closely into an internal gear. The internal gear can either be part of the coupling hub assembly as seen here or mounted on each end of the coupling spacer assembly as seen in the second example. If the internal gears are hub mounted, then the external gears are spacer mounted and vice versa. This is depicted in this cut section. Grease pack couplings, like the one highlighted here, are normally designed with hub-mounted external gears and the internal gears are part of a sleeve type spacer which serves as a retainer for the grease lubrication. The flange joint of the sleeve is either precision ground to avoid lubrication leaks or has a gasket between the two flange faces. The sleeve ends are fitted with O-ring seals, as depicted here, to keep dust out and lubrication in. In recent years, flexible element couplings have been used almost exclusively. However, many gear type couplings are still in use. They are the most compact coupling for a given amount of torque transmission of all the coupling designs. For this reason, they also have the least overhung weight. In addition, the gear coupling can adapt more readily to requirements for axial growth of the driver and driven shafts. Axial position change tolerances are on the order of one half inch or greater. Now, there is a common disadvantage in all gear type flexible couplings. Any gear mesh has a breakaway friction factor in the axial direction. This is caused by the high contact force between the two sets of gear teeth. The result is that the forces imposed on the driver and driven shafts are not totally predictable and are sometimes higher than desired due to the quality of the tooth machine surfaces and the inevitable buildup of sludge or foreign material in the tooth mesh during extended service. These forces are detrimental to the ability of the coupling to make the required corrections for misalignment, but more importantly can have a catastrophic effect on the ability of the coupling to correct for thermal or thrust force changes between the driver and driven machines. Coupling manufacturers have long been aware of this problem and have used many methods to minimize the effect. Some of these methods are listed here. The first method consists in the reduction of the forces between the gear teeth by increasing the pitch diameter of the gear mesh. This is often self-defeating in that it results in increased size of the coupling and increased coupling weight. Another method is the reduction of the breakaway friction factor by the use of higher quality gear tooth finish 
and better tooth geometry and fit. Or the reduction of sludge and foreign material buildup in the gear mesh by finer filtration of the coupling lubricant. Or finally, the reduction of sludge and foreign material buildup in the gear mesh by incorporating self-flushing passages in the coupling. This is done to allow any contaminants to pass through in the lubricant without being trapped in the gear mesh area. All of these steps have been only partially successful and the problem still exists in many applications. Just keep in mind that prior to any coupling purchase, the coupling manufacturers should provide the design breakaway friction factor of their coupling. Then the compressor train designers should use this figure to calculate the maximum axial force that the coupling would be expected to exert on the connected shafts. From this information, the designers can decide if the thrust bearings adjacent to the coupling are adequate to handle the axial loads within the machine, plus of course the possible load from the coupling resistance to any external forces. Couplings in these categories do not have moving parts and derive their flexibility from controlled flexure of specially designed diaphragms or discs. They do not require lubrication and are commonly known as dry couplings. The diaphragms or discs transmit torque from one shaft to the other just as do the gear meshes in a gear coupling. The following features are common to all flexible disc or flexible membrane type couplings. None require lubrication. All provide a predictable thrust force curve for a given axial displacement range. And when properly applied, operated and maintained, none are subject to wear and have an infinite lifespan. And finally, all provide smooth, predictable response to cyclic correction for minor misalignment. It should be noted though that none of these comments can be applied across the board to gear type flexible couplings. For this reason, more and more special purpose machinery trains are being supplied with flexible metallic element couplings in their design and many end users do not allow the use of gear type coupling for critical applications. The example that you can see here is the most common type and is generally used for general purpose applications. So not only for centrifugal compressors, but also for pumps, fans, just to name a few. The major consideration with this type of coupling is making sure the shaft and separation or BSE, as seen here, is always within the allowable limits of the couplings. This value is typically only 0.06 inches for shaft sizes in the 1 to 2 inches range. At shaft sizes over 4 inches, the maximum end float can be 0.15 inches. Exceeding the allowable end float will significantly increase the axial load on the thrust bearings of the equipment and can therefore fail the coupling discs. A cutaway view of a single diaphragm spacer type coupling is shown here. This coupling is made of a spacer, diaphragms and hubs. This type of coupling is commonly used for critical applications where axial and float values are less than 0.125 inches. If end float values are greater than this limit, a convoluted diaphragm or multiple type diaphragm must be used. During disassembly, care must be taken when removing this spacer 
to not scratch or dent the diaphragm element. A dent or even a tiny scratch that penetrates the protective coating can cause a diaphragm failure. Now, regardless of the type of diaphragm couplings, it is common practice to pre-stretch these couplings to take full advantage of the maximum available end float. So, always remember to ask equipment vendors to provide axial shaft movement calculations in order to confirm that the coupling maximum end float is not exceeded.